Awesome. Mm -hmm. So a definite, a definite predilection for science fiction, uh, obviously. If you were to write, what would you write about? Would you write a science fiction novel, or would it perhaps be a crime thriller? Hmm. It would definitely be science fiction. I would love to write a thrilling adventure about humans and robots working together to survive in the first Mars colony. Well, thank you very much, Sophia, for joining us here today. A round of applause for Sophia. <laughs> Reactions from you to Sophia. Was there any uncanny valley feeling there for you, Holger Falland? Personally, I don't think that Sophia is that intelligent at the moment. Um, to me, she seems a bit like the first um, Joseph Weizenbaum um, uh, AI test from, from the 60s and 50s. The interesting question is, indeed, what do we want to do? There's no um, uh, fate or destiny involved with our technology. Currently, a lot of uh, AI and robot discourse okay, presents the future in a certain way, as if we were automatically heading, we heading towards a West world scenario. It depends on us. <laughs> so why, again, let me ask this question, why on earth should we construct a robot that looks like a human being and misleads us into believing that it has rights and, and that we have duties towards it and there should be an ethics, we shouldn't kill robots and so forth. Why would we do that? I would say there are very good philosophical reasons against uh, androids. What's interesting is when I work with robots, mm -hmm. I realize that there's a the right amount of empathy you want to create. Don't make it too human, that's freaky, but you don't want it to look not human because then it looks like a black box. You want to have that right amount of empathy. What is that right amount? I mean, uh, when you say freaky, and I refer to the uncanny valley feeling, that is definitely the feeling that's elicited when we look at something that's yeah. almost there, but not quite, and setting us somehow on edge. You prefer the... The, the bug robots or the little the little uh, R2D2. It or turns out that much of our brains are used to recognize faces, yeah. a visual mm -hmm. processing, and therefore we just give you enough to sort of experience uh, some sort of empathetic sort of emotional response. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious to know what the optimal combination of man and machine would be. So if you could spend a weekend with Sophia, <laughs> what would you what would you do? <laughs> I don't know why I would want to spend the weekend with Sophia. I'd have to think about why. My time is really valuable in terms of what would my focus and my objective. No disrespect, Sophia. But, you know, <laughs> what, what would be my objective? And what, I have to be very deliberate in what I'm doing. Just because I'm not getting a chance to spend time with a really cool marketing concept isn't enough, you know? Okay. I, I oh, think if I answer this, it'll be censored. I'm joking. Ah. I'm joking. <laughs> no, no, what I love about Sophia is the perspective uh, contribution. It's the fact that uh, Sophia has learned from so many human beings. Yes. And I think I would love to learn different perspectives on my own thinking. Yeah, um, another thing that I would like to add is, based on all of your conversations, I feel like, especially in Africa and Ethiopia as a whole, I feel like we have a very, uh, we're very lucky not to be so exposed till, till now to these technology, to these new ideas, AI and such. But now that we are going to be exposed, we have uh, the opportunity to make the changes that are necessary uh, on the topics that you've just said. And this just gives me a whole new insight on what we should do next and how we should go into uh, building this society that uh, appreciates and complements uh, the world we're living today. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bethlehem Desi. Well, we started this conversation, obviously, with the question, can AI be truly creative? We've had some very conflicting views, and we probably won't ever really get a definitive answer. Anyway, I'd like to thank all of my panelists for joining us here today. Marcos Gabriel, Karen Pondesi, Raghava Keke, and Holga Kholan. Thank you very much to our studio audience for being here today at the Global Media Forum in Bonn. Thanks for watching, and take care.